everybody. We're back for another Messy Play video. This week a little bit different. We've been through all of the different stops that we do at Messy Play sessions. Um, there's five of those. Uh, so what I thought I'd do would be to look a bit more closely at how um, learning is integrated into those stops at Messy Play. Because obviously the children just think they're mucking around. Um, and you may do as well while you're there. But there's um, a little bit of learning dripped into every stop. And this week I'm going to focus in on number and how that comes into the messy play that we do. And because we are all at home at the moment trying to home educate perhaps a range of different ages with a toddler on board as well, I thought I would stretch the activities up a little bit so that you could see how you might be maybe even already doing quite a bit of maths with your, year, your reception, your year ones, your year twos, or if not, how you can bring it in and build it in and feel a bit better about what you're doing hopefully make it a little bit less stressful. Um, so first of all, just thinking about messy play and number. And um, the, messy, the way that I do number at messy play is we quite often have songs involved. So lots of the nursery rhymes that the children do are based around the numbers zero up to five. So you've got five little speckled frogs, you've got five currant buns, five little ducks. You might have the ducks or the frogs in your water tray or a little tray of water at home. You might have them in the bath. Um, you might put, do um, current buns when you're doing uh, Play-Doh. That'd be nice to do. Um, if you wanted to stretch that up a little bit for reception children, it'd be a good idea to start getting some numbers involved, some actual digits. And you might have those at home already, something plastic like this that you that might come from another game or you might have a set of those plastic magnets um, 0 to 10 um, or foam ones or sponge ones that you can paint with perhaps so if you have those and you chuck them in with whatever they're playing with you'll find actually your children will start to integrate them anyway the difference between a toddler or a young toddler doing it and perhaps a reception child going up through into year two is a toddler at the moment isn't attributing the amounts that they're playing with to a digit, whereas that's the link you're starting to make as they're getting older. So toddlers might say one, two, three, go, and they've sort of learned that as a pattern, but they don't know that one is an amount, two is an amount, three is an amount, and that's what you're starting to build up when they're getting a little bit older. So a good start for that is to start having some digits to, have to hand and sort of put them in with the play. Um, so if you've got the water tray, you could have your five frogs, but also maybe the numbers one to five in with the learning as well and with the game. Um, I, one thing I did find actually was that if you search uh, the BBC radio um, education, all the nursery rhymes since forever are on there recorded and they're being sung by all their favourite CBBS people. So you can play those and let them listen to them. And the more they sing them and the more they familiarise themselves with number, the better. That's how it all works. Growing up and getting them a little bit older, I would make something to have around, really easy, just a number line or an old bit of paper or whatever you've got. You might let them get involved maybe and do a number a day. I've seen people doing that on Instagram. And you could, so then you could make a number a day and decorate it and have a great big freeze on your wall. I would really recommend having a number line somewhere visible in your house all the time, because what children need in order to really embed their learning is a visual representation, something in their head to go back to. When you say to them, oh, I've got five, what's one more? They can think five in their head and see the number line and jump up or jump back one more. And um, that really helps their learning. I should say, actually, I meant to say at the beginning, I'm absolutely not advocating you hot housing your children. This isn't to get you so that you can do loads of maths at home and they can be really ahead when they go back to school. Um, it's just really to help you realise that you're probably already doing a lot of maths at home and, and you might not need to have them all set up at the table with books and pencils and whatever, that you can maybe integrate it into what you're doing. Um, another way you could do a fun number line is maybe take loads of strips of paper, again it could be scrap or wrapping paper, whatever you've got, start them off with a number and then dot them for a bit and let them start to write them. So they won't be doing that till maybe later reception, year one, year two, if you're starting to draw their digits, that will help them practice getting them the right way round. Then you can get the glue and start looping them and make a big number chain and put them in order, get them to put them in order. You could make up your own counters or get them to make some. You could get some stones from the garden, some sharpies, put a digit on each one, make them put the right number of dots on each one, 
then get them to put them in order. So there's lots and lots, even if you just got them to number, order a number, set of numbers each day, that would be really, really helping them. Um, you'll have lots around your house already and lots of things you're doing that involve number. Um, and so I just thought I'd rustle up a few of them that we have lying around still, even though our children are older, um, that will help you realise, yeah, that's helpful. So board games, maybe a bit contentious because it's always the start of a war in our house even now. Um, and tension is high at the moment anyway. But they have got a number, it's a number board, isn't it? It's a number grid. So they're thinking about, they know the higher the number, the better they're doing. If they're going up, they're jumping up numbers. So that's a really useful way to embed the number grid in their head and get them thinking about numbers being as, as, a, as a line, as a progression. Um, and that goes with that is dice, and I've only got really small ones here. But dice are really, really important for children's learning because one of the really key steps when they're around year one, year two, is for them to recognise that pattern as six, that is six, without having to count it. So you might have quite a few things in your house that represent six like that. So um, the Duplo blocks do it too. So we used to call these a fourer. So you've got fours, you've got eights, you've got longer, you've got more, you've got less. You've got dominoes there. You've probably got a bigger set of those. These are a bit old school, but you can get ones with pictures on and all sorts. But again, they're recognising that's a pattern of five so that you, you want them to be able to see that's five and not have to count it. That's a really good skill. Older ones, you could just take that and make them count up how many dots they've got already. If they're like a year two child, they can start, they want, you want them to start with a big number and add on the two more. So there's loads you can do, probably with the stuff you've got. You could make a number line if you've got a deck of cards. You could get them, you could just give them those in a jumble and get them to order them on the table to make sure they've got the number line in their head and the, the order of the numbers, why not? If you are being given work to do that, and the children quite like maybe doing number sheets or whatever you're being given by your school, just make sure that you've got a number line. So if they're older, you're going to be going up to 20 there or maybe do a board for them or a grid. You can get them, download them quite easily. So they've got something really visual to work with. Have your number line, but also have something to count with. So if they're being asked to add up, make them or just give them a pile of pasta or something that they can use as counters. You might count as from a game, but you can have pasta, whatever you like. Um, you can make up little games for them where they might roll a dice and they've got to pick up that many pieces of pasta. Or maybe they've got to make it in the pattern of the dice. So if they've got four, they've got to put it in the pattern of four, something like that. Um, you can use your pegs if you've got pegs for your washing. You can get your sharpie out and get the numbers on those. You could have one peg for odds, one peg for evens. And then don't forget all the kind of real life maths that you're doing all the time. So um, any year one, two teacher would definitely tell you time is a massive bugbear for teachers. It takes forever to teach a whole class to tell the time. You could be doing a bit of that at home because you can be pointing out to them, no, darling, it's five o'clock in the morning, you need to go back to bed, or whatever you're saying. So if you can forget to them the, the o'clocks and the half pasts, and you can point out the clock on the wall and point out that there's a digital one on their, lap, on their iPad or your iPad or the phone or whatever the cooker, it just gets those mathematical ideas in their head about that, that it is all around them. Um, lots of people doing baking, lots of cooking at the moment. Maybe you're baking with Daisy Bakes. Um, if so, there's loads of maths in that, isn't there? If you're adding spoonfuls of something, you're saying one more, one more, a little bit more. This one's heavier, that one's lighter. You're weighing things out. That's really useful maths. Um, and then money, of course, another bugbear at school. Why don't you get the, a load of coins? Because we're not really using coins at the moment, are we? If you um, clean them up, you can just, this one's been just dunked in some vinegar or brown sauce cleans them off. Clean them up, so that's another activity, that can be the day before, and get them to use them in some way. So maybe they can make a shop and put little prices onto things. Maybe they are making the five current buns in the baker shop and then they're charging you for them. Um, I've seen a brilliant idea where they've done a snack stall for the day, so the snacks are on top and with prices on and they've got to use their coins during the day to, to budget and buy the snacks. That's a good idea. Um, and I guess the last thing to say is really about the number language that you use all the time. So if they are, so there's, there's words and expressions like one more and one less that are really important for children to know 
when they were around the year, reception year one time. So if they can say, right, I've got three, what's one more? Or if you do that one more time, um, you'll have one less sweet later. So if you can start using that kind of language, you'll just notice that you're using it. Those are mathematical terms. All the measuring that you might be doing, you could get them to measure with pieces of string outside. Can you find something longer than this, shorter than this? Lots and lots of different maths things. Odds and evens, pairs and doubles. Have a little think using those words and highlighting them to the children. Um, if you have any great ideas and you try something out, maybe send us a photo of it and we'll use it on our pages. So keep us posted on what you're doing and we'll see you next time.